Okay, so my name's Nadine Douglas and this is my my purebred pug Taylor and she's three years old and today she's going to be Boas tested and Boas testing is brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome and it's assessing how well flat face breeds can breed. So we're just gonna scan her for microchip. Do you want the hands on? What's her name? Taylor. So, how um, how did the BOAS testing first come about? So, it was research from Cambridge University. Mm -hmm. About seven years they started ago, they started. Yeah. Um, it was a collaboration with the UK Council to try and help address. So obviously there was a lot of um, issues coming up in some of our flat face breeds that were being identified by Yeah, the yeah, and, and increasing public concern okay. with regards to breed. So hopefully this process, what, where do you see it going for the future? Uh, well, it's international now, so there's numerous European countries have adopted the program. Um, America's just signed up, we have, uh, I don't know about New Zealand. So it's... Um, the, the, the rationale is it's validated, so it's a clinical test that was validated against a laboratory tool that can actually give estimates of function. So for the first time we actually had a way of giving owners an estimate of how severe or whether or not, firstly whether or not the child has obstructive airway, mm -hmm. and secondly how severe the child has obstructive airway. So, so we're going to um, do a physical examination a physical exam, today? Physical exam, I just think we'll listen to the heart and lung. Very good. And then we're going to take a look. Yeah. 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 Too good. Do you want to take a look? Yeah, that'd be which is a high pitch squeaking noise. Yeah. Now that's much a worse that's noise. A concern. You don't want yeah. that one. Okay. Yeah. But excessive stir so that yeah. it is also problematic. Right. This little guy's very quiet and we can't hear it externally when we stand here. No, so you'd good. have to have a thermometer. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry, no, no, a the, do the doctor is severe, we'd be able yes. to hear it without okay. a test Yeah. Good girl. So, so this sort of preferred you at home, mm -hmm. it's, it's really easy. If you can't hear the noise at rest or when you go for a three minute jog yep. externally, mm -hmm. you probably have a mild dog. And if you can hear noise externally, particularly after a three minute run, you have a moderate to severe. Okay. So we assess the, the nose. Now the nose doesn't make you obstructed or not obstructed. Mm -hmm. And we have reference chart. Right. This is all developed by Cambridge as well. Yeah. So right at the top is open and right at the bottom is, is uh, closed mm -hmm. or still not severe. Yep. So we're we're on the severe end of the spectrum here. Okay, so I, she's I quite closed. Yeah. And and if you look moderate is open along the bottom but closed vertically. Mm -hmm. Mild is open in both but it's a smaller hole. Yep. And severe is closed on both aspects. Okay. Mm -hmm. And these charts are on the internet, so again, you, right. you can self-assess to some extent. Okay. Yeah, so that you have an idea of what your dog's doing. Alright, 
job time. Alright, so it's not. Oh, wait time, is it? <laughs> oh, wait time, okay. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> 78.8, subtract 69.7. So yep. because they're quite a truncated dog, uh -huh. again, Jane and Cambridge set this up yep. so that we have a way of, I'd, I'd still go seven. Uh -huh. but the thing is for showing, you need them really quite heavy. Well, heavy. Cobby's, the, cobby's yeah, the, the, the breed standard. But yep. actually, if you were an ideal dog, yep. so you, you'd, you'd consider want to have a little a bit, bit more of a waist. Thin little mm -hmm. thing, yeah. Yes. But, and in pugs, weight really influences. Absolutely. So I think in a lot of breed. the flat-faced breeds, yeah, yeah, weight is a big... James actually has the pugs from the most of the pugs, right? Compared to other I don't think she feels yeah. too much. I mean, you only have to feel Yeah, no, no, she's pretty good. She's so she's, uh, you know, yeah. I'm probably mean. I call her a seven. Vincent's calling her a six. But there's always a bit of variation, yeah? <laughs> yeah. And that's the other thing. There is a little bit of variation. We have yeah. to accept that. Mm -hmm. All right, run time. All right, so just over. Yep. Uh, hang on a sec. Oh. We, we need to go to three minutes. Yep. Off we go. Out All door. right. Yeah. Some dogs resolve their noise, noise really quick, which is why it's good to be with the dogs while they're jogging. <laughs> yeah, so she's already stopped. Yep. Yeah. So for the video, if you want to just trot her a little bit and bring her yep. back to the noisy. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's not a test of... Thank 
Okay. That's more fancy. We'll try again. <laughs> That's a bit floaty. So that, that makes her great too. So yep. from a pet owned perspective, mm -hmm. um, that would be starting to consider surgery. It's, it's and what sort of surgery would you, would you consider? Oh, so, so Not necessarily for her, but, in, in, but when no, we no, talk about... No, no, that's a really good question because the, if, it's really what we need to get to people is that not every brachystolic has obstructive airway, yes. so not every brachystolic needs surgery. Yep. But if your dog does need surgery, yep. you need all aspects addressed. Right. So just doing the palate or just doing the nose yep. won't give you the degree of disease control yep. that we're after, and we cannot make these dogs normal. Yes. So we can take them from severe or moderate yep. to mild. Yep. And so severe to moderate and moderate to mild, more mm. or less. Some, some do much better than that, and sometimes, sometimes they're disappointing. But the, the reality though is we're, we're treating the dogs who need us and therefore we need to do everything for them. Yeah. So, so what else would you do? You'd so do the outer nose, mm -hmm. yeah, and the two parts of the nose is outer and inner, right. then the power, yes. and it's hotly discussed in amongst pets. Shorten, absolutely, reduce the thickness. Probably that's the way to go, that's my preference as mm -hmm. well. If the tonsils are outside of the tonsillar crypt, so they're protruding, we take those. Okay. And if they have laryngeal flaps and some sort of vertebral sacules, mm -hmm. little fleshy bits, yep. they get taken out as well. Wow. So okay. there's talk about five procedures, but in reality it's four. It's the yep. palate length and thickness, that's one. The, the nostrils, mm -hmm. which is inner and outer. Yep. The tonsils, potentially tonsils and potentially sacules. Mm -hmm. But you really have to assess each dog as a, its own unique individual. Yes. Uh, the, the other consideration too is that you know, I have owners who want to run their dog for 30 minutes. Yeah. They're going to present early. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they, you know, and there's other owners, the dog never leaves the count. Mm. They, don't, they never recognise it because the dog's always in aircon. Mm. It, it doesn't do anything. So a lot of people sort of talk about the length of muzzle too, but you yeah. can still have some of these crossbreeds that can have those issues oh, yeah, too, yeah, can't absolutely. you? And, so and just lengthening a muzzle well, or crossing a breed is not going to eradicate. Well, Some of those it's, it's, issues. That, that's one of the complexity, but mm -hmm. there was a, an a, original report that showed a correlation between length of nose mm -hmm. and length of skull, yeah. but no, none of the other literature shows that, so that right. was one science oh, report. Interesting. Yeah. But what Jane's works on, and she's got huge numbers, it's, it's more to do with the width of the skull. Right. So in the Frenchie, the length of the nose is a risk factor as well, but in Hudson's English, it's all about the width of the skull, right. the length of the neck and the width of the neck. So short, wide necks mm -hmm. and and wide heads mm -hmm. are a risk factor, and more, and stenotic nares are a risk factor. But risk factors don't mean disease. Right. Yeah, that, that's also misunderstood. So you may have a risk factor, yeah. and you're fine. So I, I'm. I have the genetics for uh, celiac, but I'm not a celiac. Right. Yeah? Yep. It's, it's, it's it one of those things. Yeah, so it, 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 this cause and effect sometimes is too tightly associated. Yep. Because 
brachy starting constructive airway, it's all aspects of the airway, yes. not one part. No, and no. it also has a secondary component, which is what they develop over time, which is the laryngeal collapse. Yes. And very recently, something called pharyngeal collapse. Right. So it's, um, yeah, you, you have to have more than one part. Mm. So I see dogs with very synodic nares that are very mild, and yep. I see dogs with very wide trapeas, that, yep. and that was a dog I did surgery on yesterday, wide trapeas, really so severe the, presentation, yeah. 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 So, back so they're all, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. right. And that's the key message as well, is if, you, if you're looking at intervention, yep. dog has to be assessed as an individual. Yep. If you're just given a formula, yep. be cautious. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So overall, how do you think she is? She's a two, yeah. Yep. So yep. I mean, ultimately, um, weight loss is a great idea for her. Yep. And she, how old is she? Three. Yeah. yeah. So in a, in a client's hands, yep. we would assess it from a surgical perspective, mm -hmm. but there's a lot more questions I'd be asking you. Yes. So, yeah. you know, how does she eat? Is she, is she um, got any evidence of sleep apnea? So pacing at night, sleeping with her head extended, sleeping with a toy in her mouth. Um, how long can she exercise for? How long does she take to recover? And if you said to me, oh, I can take her for a five minute run and that's it, she's done, and she mm -hmm. takes 20 minutes to recover, I'd be like, mm, yeah. you know, you need surgery. So yeah. if you were telling me she was pacing at night or sleeping with a ball in her mouth, that would be a concern. Mm, if right. she so goes to the, eat and she stops and starts, of that, that is that really clinically impacted. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. So she, she's one to be assessed, but. Um, yeah, there's a bit more to it than just this. This is a tool to give us mm -hmm. an estimate, yep. but it's a tool, yep. and it needs to be done with all and the it's other a tool things. Yeah. Be yeah, and it's developed and that's right. More probably and over time with, with the more people you get coming to test the dogs, that's right. And the more, that's right. Yep, the more and the, knowledge that comes out. The key, the tool was you know, the, the primary motivation motivation originally mm -hmm. was to create a tool to help people select better dogs for breeding. Absolutely. Now it has become a clinical tool, but it needs to be you know, it needs to be acknowledged that its primary role is to help people select dogs for breeding. And so when we use it in the clinical setting, we need to make sure we're asking all those questions and assessing the entire airway before we make you know, before we make a conclusion of what to do. Okay. Right. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much for it's your time dog. today. Yeah. Thank you. Alrighty.